Welcome everyone to another unboxing. Today is a bit of a big one. Uh, courtesy of James, thank you for your big one. Uh, this is Warcry Sundered Fate. So this is the the new core box, I guess you'd call it, that has two warbands and a buckload of terrain. So we've seen previous ones, obviously you've got the original core box which you cannot find anywhere now, which is a cracking good deal. Um, with your uh, two warbands and fantastic terrain. Uh, I've used it before for D&D, &D, great wall sections, things like that. Um, spiky fences though, the amount of times I've stabbed myself with those blurs. Uh, and then, uh, oh, what do we have next? I know we had Red Harvest. Red Harvest is a great kit as well. Looks like a kind of like a mining kind of uh, set of terrain. Um, which had Conan looking models and Arachnid looking models in it as well, both of which I think are brilliant. And yes, I still need to pick up a copy. I know there's a few guys at our local club that are playing Warcry that have a copy. Uh, but I really need my own core set, man. I really need my own core set. I know we've played Warcry on the channel before and we've had a, a few battle reports. Uh, I've had a few battle reports of Phil, uh, Marcus. Uh, James, in fact, as well, went up against uh, James's Iron Jewels. They hit like a truck and nicely painted too, which is never a bad thing. doesn't matter if you get absolutely obliterated by uh, a warband. <laughs> you know, if they're nicely painted, it just kind of blinds me. You know, it's like a shiny model syndrome. So in this box, what do you get? You get me waffling on loads. And it is pretty damn weighty. So I will zoom in a bit so we can actually see some stuff. There we go, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? So, uh, James, I know, is a massive fan of Lizardmen, of Ode. Uh, but now we have some Skink uh, remodels. So the Skink original models are, correct me if I'm wrong, but they've got to be at least 20 years old. They're definitely dated. Uh, so these are looking fantastic. I love the look of these. And Terror Wing as well. I think that guy looks wicked. Um, if I had to pick a warband from this box, I would definitely go for more that side of the box. Purely because when I first saw the Jade Obelisk, I assumed when you had the, the whole warband picture that... The obelisk was just an individual piece, like on a base or something, uh, behind that model. I didn't realise it was part of that model. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it looks like he's carrying a big chunk of rock. And yeah, he is actually carrying a big chunk of rock. It doesn't do much for me. They are gorgeous looking models. And if you notice, the Warcry specific bands from the Unmade to the Corvus Cabal all that lot. They do look unique, they do look pretty cool. Um, like the last lot, the Minotaur um, worshipping looking ones, very unique. I've never seen any other fantasy games have that kind of model, which is great for Games Workshop. Personally, doesn't do anything for me, but these are lush looking models. Uh, same with the terrain. The terrain is wicked in these boxes. So you see in this box here, very, very unique. Initially thinking it's just bridges and trees, and that's nice. Don't get me wrong, that is nice. But uh, not just any bridges, not just any trees, because the trees are actual like muscle, sinewy kind of looking trees. If I zoom in a little bit there, you can see the leaves are actually like teeth or bone or something. Very, very different. Very cool. I like that. So not just generic trees. Um, like I said, the, the terrain in the last few boxes have been brilliant. Uh, the original box is just classic fantasy looking brick walls, which is fine. And they are gorgeous, don't get me wrong. But the fact that these are just weird and wonderful, I, I think it's fantastic. Right, enough waffle, sir. Let's see what's in the box. So this box contains... Uh, a 64-page Stealth and Stone Warband Tome, 
22 inch by 30 double sided gaming board, 30 battle plan cards, 15 fighting cards, fighter cards, 2 ability cards, 3 divider cards. Okay. <clears throat> also includes, which you'll be pleased to know, 23 Citadel miniatures, 13 hunters, 10 jade obelisks, uh, the Warcry scenery, which has the Narlux, Hollow Refuge, Rope Bridges, Obstacles. The War, bo uh, the War Cry Core Box is required to play this game. So, if you know anything about War Cry, at the moment you know that some of the uh, models have been changed points-wise and a few different abilities. And now, also, they add something called Reactions which is something on your War Band's main ability card. So let's have a look at some pretty magic, shall we? So Games Workshop, as per usual, fine quality plastic. Uh, really nice, you can cut it because it's not too hard a plastic or a brittle plastic if you wanted to convert it. Um, works extremely well with plastic glues and has fantastic detail. So even though these are just like bamboo um, strapped together. You can see quite clearly the knots on the strapping on the tarp here that could well be flesh uh, stitched together or leather of some kind. There's quite a bit of detail there. Some texture on it. Uh, the bones there as well look wicked. So initially when you see it just like a bamboo wall you think that's pretty boring but you look at it you can see the cracks in the bamboo you can see the rope ties you know, each piece is quite high detailed, even on the terrain. And you would think the terrain would be quite basic, being a big chunk of rock or something, until you realise, wait a minute, that's not rock, that is probably a god beast spine or something. Look at that, massive. So, um, scale wise, what have I got next to me? Next to me, you always have miniatures next to you, right? I have currently a Goliath with no arms and a head, because I'm still umming and about options. That is not a small model, the Goliath, and that's a big chunky spine. Um, and once again, here are the trees that technically aren't trees. Bulging, muscly sinew with bone and teeth for leaves. Creepy as something out of a horror film. Uh, at Warhammer World itself, I went, I went there recently, where this style terrain was announced. They made it quite pink and quite fleshy, which looked quite vibrant and fun. Be nice to have it painted up on the channel. Uh, let's play a few games on, which is great. But I have seen people on Instagram paint them up really, really dark, menacing, more like something out of Hellraiser or something. Because uh, there's lots of bone, lots of skulls, lots of flesh. You can really, really put some horrible enamel washes over them and make it look almost grimdark in an AOS setting. So that's the terrain. I've uh, got a couple repeat sheets. Um, this one here is pretty cool. It looks almost like a Tyranid tail or something. 40k sprouting out the ground as you do. Um, here are the rope and bamboo bridges, which I think look ace. That'd be perfect for Outlands. Nice to have that like, in between two pieces of terrain. Uh, I noticed the bell tower on one of the Warcry kits had a couple of skeletons in cages, which is pretty cool. The bound skeletons are back. Um, yeah, it's looking like a pretty nice kit. And that's more Seraphon Lizardmen looking as techy type of terrain. Next we have the war bands. So I did say I wasn't going to get into these guys at all. The stone people don't interest me. I've seen the artwork, it doesn't interest me. But instantly looking at them, they are pretty damn cool. The guy with the two double light Swords, rapier-like swords. Fantastic level of terrain. Um, <laughs> level of miniatures. Um, you can see like, the cracks in the, the wooden pickaxe 
handle, the teeth, trophies, relic-y kind of things that they would wrap around the belt. That is a nice looking base as well, I like that. That's pretty cool. Like I said, I don't think I've, they've made a wall band yet specifically for Warcry. Um, <laughs> that really truly looks terrible. They're all quite unique, weird and wonderful, as such it should be in AOS for all those different realms. Chameleons. Look at that little curly tail. How could you ever be mad at that guy? Little blow pipes. That's pretty nice. Let's get the camera focusing. There we go. Look at that. Some spears. James is going to love these guys. I mean, I know you'd probably like the chunkier lizard men. Rather than small, nimble, stealthy looking guys. But I'm sure he'll love. Look at that face. Almost looks like a Skeksy. I do apologise. I'm sorry. Right, okay. So, we have a lovely piece of artwork dividing the miniatures and the terrain from the rules. Pack of bases. Nothing terribly exciting about that. We have the wall band tome. And in the bottom of the box we also have the terrain map. Okay, here's one side of the map. If you ever played Warcry before, you know the double sided mats. Um, looks quite rusty. Some pieces of stone. Occasional skull, some roots, some buried Aztec looking terrain. And on the other side, almost more like a volcanic kind of ground, quite devoid of life. A bit greyer, more bamboo looking terrain buried. High level detail though, and a nice thick cardstock. Quite, quite durable. Lovely. Uh, the Stealth and Stone Tome. So this is the book that comes with the box. Pan out a little bit there. So a little bit of background, to give a bit of flavour to the game, and the two warbands. A lovely map there. Why can't I have nice sounding places? The Tainted Wound, the Eater Pit. So like it said on the back of the, the box originally, you will need the core book to play the game. So a little bit of background to each of these gangs, what drives them, some of the great conquests, like on both gangs as well. Some examples of the gangs painted up. Really do like Terror Wing. Some gorgeous colours there. And the more I look at these guys, the more I do like them. I do think that stone carry model looks a little bit crazy. Not 
not as bad as I initial thought. Okay, so we have the faction specific rules. <coughs> so like I said, we now have reactions on our faction abilities card. So this is the same as what you get on the faction ability card. Now they have reactions. So these guys specific, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit nicer. Try to avoid some of the glare. The Curse of the Jade. A fighter can make this reaction when they are targeted by a melee attack, but before the hit rolls are made. Subtract one from the damage points allocated. Oops, allocated, easy. Um, subtract one from the damage points allocated to this fighter for each hit and crit hit from that attack action to a minimum of one. Okay, so it makes them a little bit more survivable, but you've got to declare it before the hit rolls are made. So you have no idea what kind of level of damage someone's going to do to you, but you have to declare it. So to perform a reaction, it does cost an action to do so. So you will be giving up an action. Uh, you can even put a model on pause, and then if someone tries attacking you, so that'd be good if you want to stay on the objective, try to keep it alive, because it still costs an action to do it. You'll be giving up an action to do any kind of reaction. So the hunters have slippery. A fighter can make this reaction after they have been allocated damage points by a melee attack action. This fighter makes a disengage action. Okay, so this is after damage points have been allocated. If they survive, that is, this fighter can make a disengage action. Okay, so it's a free disengage. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what kind of situation you might not need, need that in. Maybe you need to get to the an objective. Didn't quite have enough uh, models holding an objective or something. So these guys are definitely a bit more stealthy. <coughs> so going back to the Jade guys. Um, you can see here, they're all approximately 100 points, some 105, 110, 95, but all around 100 point marks. Um, they are not too shabby. They are 20 points of health. 8 points of health on the squishy idle arc, uh, 20 points on the obelisk bearer, uh, 12, 12, 10, and 10. So if you've got real squishy minions, that would be like an 8 health, but these guys have 10s or more, unless you're talking about the idle arc. Um, they're all speed. Threes or fours, because presumably they are carrying rocks, uh, apart from the idle arc, which is a speed eight. Um, they haven't got crazy high crits. I would say some of the more elite stuff, like the obelisk bearer and the statue smasher, that's the big guy with the hammer, um, they have a slightly higher crit ratio. Uh, and the guy with the war pick, so they can crit on fives for damage, which is pretty nice. Um, there's nothing here that says, oh my god, that's amazing, on the main rule set. And if you look at the abilities, um, so you got um, hammering strikes. So you can use the hammering strikes on the defacer, stone cutting tools guy. Um, so a fighter can use this ability. If an enemy fighter has been allocated damage points by an attack action made to them by this activation, half the value of the ability rounding up to the damage points allocated by each hit and critical hit from the next melee attack action. This activation that targets that enemy fighter. That's not bad. <coughs> um, 
what have we got on the big guy with the war pick? So the big guys with the war pick or the, the hammer have the rock shattering blow. So the rock shattering blow adds one to the strength characteristic of the next melee attack action made by this fight or this activation. Add one to the damage points allocated by each hit and critical hit from that attack action. So that's pretty nice actually. I, I do change my opinion to all right, they are critting on um, their crits will do five damage, to now their crits will do six damage, and they're technically strength six rather than strength five. Strength five is still good. Strength five is still good. I mean, that guy has four attacks, that guy has three attacks. Um, the one that has three attacks has a slightly better regular damage, so three rather than that one has a two. Um, Movement of three is pretty slow. Toughness of four is okay. It's okay, I would say it's pretty average. 12 wounds, which is just above the average, I would say, for a, a normal gruntish looking guy. Um, but yeah, making them strength six, you're wounding most things on threes, and the extra damage is nice. So that guy would be four and six on the damage. So they can hit fairly hard, uh, but speed is definitely not their friend. Whereas I'd imagine the lizard men are a bit, bit quicker. So first initial thoughts, um, they're definitely cheaper. 90, 75, 70, 70, 70, 75, 90. Um, so I'd imagine they're gonna be a bit squishier. Uh, so yeah, whereas the other guys have got more hit points, the highest one on this side has got 12, 12, 8, so they are definitely squishier than the basic um, 12 on the other guys. Um, they are a little bit faster, so they're all 6s across the board, apart from the Terror Wing, as you can imagine, it is a speed of 10. Definitely rapid. 10, so if you want to move twice, that's 20 inches of movement. Really, really nice. Of course, if you do your basic rush, adding an extra inch to those movements, that's pretty nice. You can get to most places on the board. Um, so you do have a little bit of range attack. The Chameleon Skink uh, with the Dark Pipe is range six. Uh, there's another one here with a Dark Pipe is also range six. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, so they've got more range than the other guys, and the other guys are slower as well. Uh, whereas these guys, toughness really is not good. Uh, I mean, the dark pipes are toughness one. So you're un well, not unlikely, you're less likely to damage people. Uh, the damages are ones twos and threes on the crits. Um, it's pretty bad, so that all of them are damage one, whereas if you look at the stone guys, uh, there's a few ones, but you've got twos, threes, twos. Yeah, the stone guys are definitely gonna hit higher, uh, but I imagine these guys are more about the slinking away back into the shadows, being a bit more stealthy. Uh, they are toughness twos, and the harder ones are threes, so they're gonna be more likely to be taken out. Uh, so what have we got here? Uh, so, let's go for Harold Bolas. So pick an enemy visible fighter within eight inches of this fighter on a roll. Uh, roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. So if it's a six, you roll six dice. If one of the dice scores a six, the fighter makes one fewer actions this battle round to a minimum of zero. If the fighter is reduced to zero actions in this way, the fighter cannot be activated in this battle round. So that's pretty cool. So bolus, normally when you throw it, you wrap around people's ankles, slows them down. So that's quite thematic. So these guys have some tricks. They're not gonna hit very hard, 
but they've got a few tricks by the looks of it. Uh, envenomed weapons. Add one to the damage points allocated by each hit and critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter, this action. So it is a double, so it's fairly easy to pull off. Uh, they're still not going to do massive amounts of damage. But they are more models in their gang because they are cheaper. So depends on your playstyle, depends what you like. So we have the Hollow Refuge here. That's the place with all the skulls. Uh, I do like uh, the Shattered Post, which is a very skinky looking terrain overgrown with vines. You've got little ribcage wall sections as well. It's pretty nice. I mean, I can imagine there'd be a lot of fun painting the, the lizard men up. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go for the classic green colour. I just want to be a bit more eye-catching, a bit different, maybe some oranges. But you can literally pick any fluorescent colour, and I think it could work. I really do. So, yeah, the uh, the gnarl oaks are uh, pretty weirdy. Uh, weirdy. Um, <laughs> muscly looking trees. And then you've got your rope bridges. So, forest tactics here. Uh, so, forage, place traps, wrangle beasts, modify equipment, lay an ambush, go native. Okay. So, this is about picking strategies. After the deployment, players can agree to use forest tactics. If they do so, each player secretly picks one of the following strategies. The ones I mentioned a minute ago. That's pretty cool. So you can lay an ambush, go native, wrangle a beast, place traps. Pick one terrain feature. The first time an enemy fighter finishes movement on or within three of that terrain feature, allocate three damage points to that fighter. If your warband includes any fighters with the trapper rune mark, allocate it four damage points instead of three. That's pretty nice. Um, adds a little something to the game. I mean, not you really need it. Warcry is an excellent game. It really is a fantastic game. I do have a lot, a lot of fun. There are some quests as well for the Jade Obelisk. Some specific missions that you can play rather than pulling the random cards that you normally do playing Warcry. Same with the Hunters as well. Uh, it also gives you some ideas for campaigns. Okay, interesting book, interesting book. Lots of fluff at the very beginning there, if you're interested in that kind of thing. If you rather just get straight into playing the game, obviously you still need the core book anyway to play the game. But that's interesting. Adds a little bit of something to the game. This final mission, um, final sections in the book. Here are your instructions. So the instructions are fairly clear, uh, laid out quite nicely. Showing you the options, the numbers on the sprue. Um, I know a few of the Forge World instruction guides can be a bit confusing, but this looks pretty straightforward. And they don't look as spindly as some of the War Cry gangs, like the Unmade. There's some bits on there, some spiky bits that easily break off, chains and the like. So that looks pretty straightforward. <coughs> Uh, these cards, these are your ability cards, and they show you what models are what, so if you forget what they're actually named, and on the back, here are your doubles, your triples, and your quads, like I showed you a minute ago. Um, it's interesting to see they don't actually put the reactions on the cards. It would be nice if they did. But it still is in the book, and I'm sure that you play a few games and you'll remember them quite easy. Of course, these go alongside everybody's universal abilities. It's like the double that gives you rush, which is an extra inch, or the double that gives you onslaught, which is an extra attack dice, for example. It's pretty nice. And alongside those ability cards, you also have your team cards themselves. 
So the ones I've shown you earlier on in the book, you can actually have in card format in your hot little hands as well. So easier to read, I guess, if they're laid out in front of you. The book is nice as well, though, and it, it, like I said, it comes in the box. So you know, having the book next to you is not an issue. Uh, although if you buy these wall bands individually, you will only get the cards, you will not get the box. But yeah, nice card stock, um, pretty clear. If you've never played Warcry before, that is your movement, that is your toughness, that is your health. How many points the model costs to put in your, your gang? He's using a close combat weapon, which has a range 1. He has 4 attacks, they are strength 4, 2 damage on the normal hit, and 3 on a crit. So, when you roll your 4 dice when you're attacking at range 1, you need to know what your opponent's toughness is, which is this symbol here, versus your strength. So if you are hitting someone with your strength 4, and they have a toughness of 4, you need 4s on those 4 dice. If your strength is higher, you will need 3s. If your strength is lower, you will need 5s. The regular hits, and let's say in this case you are hitting somebody that is toughness 4 with your strength 4. So 4 and 5 will give you your normal hit. And if you do 6, 6 is classed as a crit, and you do the second number after the slash. So you'll be 2 normally and 3 on the crit. And that works for every single one. This guy has two different weapons, but he gets to pick either his range 1 or his close combat 1. Which is pretty nice. But everybody is exactly the same. Points, movement, toughness, health, range, how many dice they roll, how strong they are, damage, and crit value. Then we have the mission cards. So whenever you play a game of Warcry, these mission cards came in the core boxes. So you have your terrain placing cards. So you figure out which way is north. So north could be there. And it shows you basic pictures of the terrain you get in this particular box. So there's your rope bridges. That's quite an interesting layout. Looks like train tracks from above. It's the same with all the other boxes, so the ones with all the walls, you'd have like wall section, wall section for example, or wall section. But it gives you a rough idea, and you might put it an inch too far that way, or an inch too far that way or something, but both of you and your opponent should work out roughly where these pieces of train go. That's pretty brutal, only three pieces of the train, massive open space. That could be an interesting game right there. So once you have picked your terrain, you also have victory cards. So what you need to win the game. So let's pick one at random. Uh, let's say Lost Patrol, shall we? So after deployment, the attacker picks one of the defender's fighters be the scout. The scout cannot have the beast or hero remark. They cannot have wound characteristic of 20 or more. If the enemy warband contains no such fighters, generate a different victory condition. They thought of everything, haven't they? The attacker removes this scout from the battlefield and sets them up on the battlefield floor, so specifically on the floor, not on a piece of terrain, within three of one or more visible fighters in the attacker's warband. The scout cannot use abilities or make actions unless a visible fighter in a defender's warband is within three of them. The battle ends after four battle rounds. Uh, when the battle ends, if there are more of the attacking fighters than defending fighters within three of the scout, the attacker wins. Otherwise, the defender wins. So it's fairly clear what you can do in your missions. And you also have twists. Twists I really enjoy. You don't have to play them, 
but I think they're quite fine. So twist cards. So this particular twist, all fighters can use the following ability. It's a quad, so it's quite hard to get a quad. So that's when you start your turn, you roll your six dice, and if you have four dice exactly the same, you keep them to one side and you can use the quad ability. So quad ability aligned, pick one of the following effects. Add the value of this ability to the move characteristic of this fighter for the next move action. They make this action or count one hit roll that misses for the next attack action made by this fighter as a hit instead. Hmm, so an auto hit or make someone move a lot, lot faster, which is pretty nice. Um, sometimes you really, really do need the speed, and I imagine those stone guys probably do need the speed. Uh, mostly being speed three, they're really going to struggle. And they hit quite hard, so I would forget about the maybe auto hit one. But that's pretty good. It's a quad, so it will happen very often in that particular mission. That's pretty cool. Um, fevered Bite. Oppressed humidity, oppressive humidity even. Uh, what does that one do anyway? Let's have a look. Uh, for each attack action after the first that a fighter makes in the same activation, allocate two points of damage to that fighter after the attack action has been resolved. Oh dear. So basically, if you hit someone once, that's not bad. Hit them twice... Uh, yeah, you're damaging yourself for two points. So do you really want to do that? It makes it makes for an interesting game. Definitely does. And oppressive humidity makes sense. You could easily be overwhelmed by the heat on your second attack. And so the last lot of cards in the pack are your deployment. So after you put down your terrain, after you find out what mission you're going to do and what is the twist... You then randomly pull one of these cards for your deployment. So each warband should be split up into three ways. You should have your hammers, your daggers, and your shields. So swordy dagger, hammery hammer, shieldy shield. So you notice there's blues and reds, so the blues would have one of each, and the reds will have one of each. If you see R and D2, that means that particular part of your warband will come in at round two. If you see RND3, you guessed it, turn three. So it's quite interesting. So it says deploy six inches up there. And remember, you can always deploy within three of that area because some models are bigger than others. So that's double ambush. That really is a double ambush. That's gonna be a real, real messy game. I don't think the skinks are going to want to be too, too close there. But those sword, um, sh oh there. stone carrying guys definitely will be. So they're not very fast at all. Twisted Root. Pass of Peril. So they're all quite different from each other. All different from the last. And even though I don't think these packs are as terribly big as they are in the very first box set. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was more deployment types, more twists. Um, you rarely, rarely get the same game twice. I don't think I've got ever the same game twice. Catacombs, possibly a bit different because there's only so many different variants you can do underground on that map. But all the other boxes, yeah, there's so many, so many, so many different variants of games. You might have a game where speed's your friend. You might have a game where... Um, staying on the objective, having more models on that objective is what you want. Uh, so you may need a cheaper warband possibly, or maybe a more durable warband. Uh, and there's other warbands that you just straight out need to murder stuff. So Warcry is a very, very unique game. Like I said, there's never the same game twice. Going back to the warbands in this box, I do think they are gorgeous. Um, initially, you heard me say it, I didn't think the Jade was going to be my particular thing. But looking at the models themselves, yeah, I could definitely change my mind. I could definitely change my mind. 
Uh, they do hit hard, and that's the kind of style I like. Whereas it's quite interesting to see the lizard men. Um, obviously, they're the smaller ones, they're the chameleon type, and skinky ones. They're not the heavy hitting, the sores. But um, very interesting gameplay. Um, I've got a few squishy teams myself, but nothing that squishy. So it'd be quite interesting to see maybe if James wants to paint them up, we'll get on the channel, get a few games in, see how they play. I know James, generally like me, wants a harder hitting force. Um, but yeah, very, very different game style. Very different game style. And like I said, gorgeous models too. So, big thank you once again to James for letting me unbox this. So James, a uh, really good mate of mine, uh, plays Warcry on a fairly regular basis at the club. Also into God's tier at the moment as well. Um, I've played a couple games of that, but thankfully there's another game system I've just about avoided. I say that now, but you know, mistakes always get made. Uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you very much James for letting me unbox this. And I'm hoping to see you play this some point in the future. Stay safe everyone, and catch you in the next video.